My name is Dr. Ronald Carzell. I'm a fellowship trained orthopedic surgeon at Southern California Orthopedic Institute. I specialize in treating disorders of the knee and shoulder, a particular interest in shoulder arthroscopy and sports medicine. In this video, I will be discussing partial rotator cuff tears. The rotator cuff is a group of four muscles that surround the upper part of the shoulder. These muscles are important for helping to lift the arm above the head. Rotator cuff tears occur when one or more of these muscles are torn. The uh, rotator cuff can become torn away from its attachment onto the head of the shoulder. Sometimes the rotator cuff tears completely off the bone, and this is called a total rotator cuff tear. However, sometimes the tendon only tears partially. A portion of the tendon is still left, perhaps half the thickness, and this is called a partial rotator cuff tear. Rotator cuff tears can occur in a variety of different ways. They occur frequently after a fall, or when you're trying to lift something heavy above your head. They can also occur slowly over time, just simply as a matter of wear and tear for somebody who does a lot of activities or sports, particularly in the overhead position. Rotator cuff tears cause pain in the shoulder. This can be particularly troublesome at night when the patient is trying to sleep on the affected shoulder. Characteristically, rotator cuff tears also cause pain with overhead activities, particularly overhead lifting. Many patients will report significant weakness when they try to lift the arm or an object overhead. When surgery is indicated for rotator cuff tear, it can be done either as an open procedure or an arthroscopic procedure. Open procedures involve making a small incision in the front of the shoulder and then taking the end of the tendon and sewing it back down to the bone. However, more recently, arthroscopic procedures, which are a minimally invasive procedure that does the same operation, but through very small incisions and a less invasive technique, have become the standard of care. The advantage of the arthroscopic technique, aside from the smaller incisions and less pain, is that it preserves the large muscle, the deltoid muscle around the shoulder. We don't have to cut the muscle, so that cuts down the chance of stiffness, pain, and problems after surgery. Prior to rotator cuff surgery to repair a partial rotator cuff tear, it is important for the patient to regain as much motion in the shoulder as possible. By regaining motion in the shoulder prior to surgery, the chances of stiffness after surgery are minimized. Also, it's helpful to try and regain some muscle strength in the shoulder, as again, after surgery, there will be a period of immobilization when the shoulder cannot be used. By getting the muscle stronger before surgery, there's less chance of weakness after the surgery. After surgery, the patient is placed in a sling generally for about four weeks. There are some simple home exercises that will begin about two weeks after surgery to allow some gentle range of motion in the shoulder and to help to prevent stiffness. We ask them to take their pain medications initially for the first couple of days and to try and keep them comfortable we also often use an ice machine or other modalities to reduce inflammation and swelling. The patient is seen back about two weeks after surgery to check on their incisions and then we'll begin some passive exercises, in other words, moving the shoulder on their own to try and get some movement back. We wait about four to six weeks to remove the patient from the sling and begin active assisted motion, in other words, using the other arm to help lift the shoulder overhead. And I generally will wait about six weeks to begin a formal physical therapy program. Physical therapy then lasts anywhere from four to six months to uh, regain motion and strengthen the shoulder. It is important to remember that partial rotator cuff tears do not all require surgery. Some tears are small, and if the patient is not very active or in very much pain, certainly a trial of conservative treatment, including physical therapy, activity modification, anti-inflammatory medications, rest, ice, and possibly even a corticosteroid injection or to uh, reduce inflammation in the shoulder can be uh, tried prior to considering surgery. In patients who fail to respond to these measures, Arthroscopic surgery to repair the rotator cuff back to the bone is generally performed. With modern arthroscopic techniques, repair of partial rotator cuff tears is very successful. The patient can expect to get back to a good level of function with good motion and good strength. If you'd like to learn more about partial rotator cuff tears, please visit our website at www.scoi.com. Thank you for listening and I look forward to seeing you soon.